Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rahmatul alameen as a mercy to the world. Al-alameen is the ulama have interpreted to mean to refer to everything that is living. And some scholars have said that it refers to the jinn and mankind. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came with everything that is beneficial. He taught us everything. He recommended us and showed us the way and how we should eat and how we should drink, how we should use the bathroom, how we should sleep. It's nothing good except that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has guided us to it. And it's nothing evil except that he has avoided and avoided us and told us to stay away from it. We were ignorant about many things and he taught us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He explained to us the usul of the deen, the fundamentals of the religion. He explained to us the meaning of the shahada, the salah, the siyam, the hajj, the zakat, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he explained to us the qawaid, the principles of this religion. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ordered us to follow his guidance and his sunnah. And he warned us against bid'ah, innovation. Bid'ah has been defined by many of the scholars. And when you join all of their meanings to one, it means every practice, every belief that was invented after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba. Any act of worship that a person does to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which isn't legislated on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or found in the Quran, then rest assured it's a bid'ah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't only advise us to stick to his sunnah, but he advised us to follow the sunnah of his sahaba. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ أَضْضُ عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مُحْدَذَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِنْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا so you must keep to my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the rightly guided Khalifas. And those who are guided to the right way, cling to it. Beware of newly innovative matters in the religion, for verily every bid'ah is in misguidance. My brothers and sisters, in times like this, it is obligatory upon us to cling to this religion and follow the sunnah. There are two conditions for the acceptance of an act. The first one is ikhlas, and the second one is mutariyah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sincerity, that the person is doing the act, sincerity and wholeheartedly. And the second condition is that it must be in conformity with what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. The proof of that is in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ الرَّدْ That whoever innovates something in this matter of ours, in our religion, al-Islam, that which is not from it, shall have it rejected. أَخْرَجَهُ شَيْخَانِ Collected by Bukhari and Muslim. And in another narration, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ عَمِنَا عَمَنًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ الرَّدْ and whoever does an act which we have not commanded shall have it rejected, which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasn't commanded, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't commanded, nor which what the Sahaba Ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhim have come with. Muslims unfortunately have fallen into bid'ah, have fallen into innovations due to many reasons. And among the most dangerous cause for it is the blind following. Blind following those astray, misguided a'imma. People who do actions and in a result lead people astray and people follow their astray actions. They innovate bid'ah and people take it as a path. And therefore when the sunnah comes to someone who's practicing bid'ah, he rejects it. There's a bid'ah coming up next week which is well known which is circulated worldwide. And it started in the fourth century. It is a bid'ah that wasn't known during the Prophet Muhammad In fact, no bid'ah, no innovation, except which the pagans of the Quraysh were practicing of shirk in the Kaaba. Bid'ah didn't exist during the time of Muhammad Sallam because he came with the sunnah. He came with tawheed. He came with correct aqidah. This bid'ah is called the maulid of the Nabi. 
My brothers and sisters, it's not allowed to celebrate or participate in this bid'ah in any shape, form, or fashion. This practice is an innovation. The Prophet didn't do it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. None of his sahaba, ridwanallahu ta'ala alayhim, didn't do it. The tabi'een, they didn't do it. The four illustrious imams after them, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ahmad, and other than those great imams didn't practice this bid'ah. These are all the imma of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. These people were the most knowledgeable about the Sunnah, the Sahaba, and the Tabi'een. They loved the Prophet, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, more than we do. They adhere to his Sunnah more than we can, more than we do. This celebration that appeared in the fourth century by the Fatimiyun. These Fatimiyun, they were known for having corrupt aqidah. They had corrupt aqidah. The question is, who are we to come now and to follow a practice which the Prophet ﷺ didn't legislate or which his Sahaba didn't follow? Did he celebrate his birthday himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوهُ وَمَا نَحَاكُمْ أَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, take it. Whatever he do, follow it, do it. Whatever he prohibits you from, abstain from it. When we go against the sunnah, my brothers and sisters, and we follow innovation, and we fill out bid'ah, kufr, and shirk, then we are setting ourselves up for destruction. When we follow bid'ah, my brothers and sisters, we are saying that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't complete this religion. That we can come after him and do something that he didn't do. You don't have revelation. You don't know what's good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with except that the Prophet ﷺ, he guided you to it. This deen is complete, my brothers and sisters. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed the verse, This day I have perfected your religion for you. It's complete. Completed my favor upon you. And I have chosen for you Islam as a religion. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, commenting on this verse, he said that whatever was deen, whatever was religion, when this verse and before it was revealed, is deen. And whatever came after it, whatever was innovated after this verse, is not deen. We have a manual, we have a blueprint. We have the Qur'an and we have the Sunnah. But these two must also be understood the way that the Sahaba understood it. And the way that their students, the Tabi'een, understood it. And the way that their Tabi'een understood it. When we follow innovation, my brothers and sisters, we risk ourselves into falling and receiving a punishment. As Allah, He said, فَلْيَحْذِرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, and let those who oppose the Messenger's commandment, meaning His sunnah, legal ways, orders, acts of worships, and statements, be aware, beware, and to see them fitnatun. Perhaps a fitna might befall them, fitna such as disbelief, fitna such as trials, afflictions, earthquakes, killings, and being ruled by a tyrant. Fitna might befall them, or a painful punishment be afflicted on them. Every prophet, my brothers and sisters, every messenger sent to mankind, explained the laws. They taught us the do's and the don'ts. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it was the duty of every prophet that has gone before me to guide his followers to what he knew what was good for them. As it is known, our Prophet Muhammad is the best among the messengers ever sent. 
My brothers and sisters, doing a few acts of sunnah is better than doing many acts of bid'ah. As we know, bid'ah is rejected. The person with the honest intention, the person with the clear heart seeking the truth, he knows that the mawlid of the Prophet Muhammad isn't from the sunnah. It is an innovation which Allah and His Messenger ordered us to avoid and warned us from. The Muslims shouldn't be amazed by the large number of people who follow it and do it around the world, as the truth has never been known by numbers. The truth is not known by numbers. The truth is known based on the adilla, based on the proofs and evidences found in the Quran, found in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and found with the ijma, this ummah, which there is a consensus. So don't be amazed by the people following it. Don't be amazed by those numbers or in which those countries which they celebrated or have taken it as a legal holiday. The truth isn't known by a large number of people who do this act, rather the truth is known by the Quran, Sunnah, and the Ijma'ah. A kullu kawli had the sub for the level two play. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, and al-khayra nabi al-mursaleen, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, bid'ah has become widespread in our day and time. And from amongst those reasons that this bid'ah innovations have become widespread is one, ignorance between the Muslims. Muslims don't take the time to learn their religion. Muslims don't take their time to learn the sunnah. Muslims are just following any wave and tide that comes ashore. Another reason for the spreading causes of bid'ah is misguided ulama, people who speak out of their hawa, people who speak not based on the Quran and Sunnah, people who have fallen into excessive worship is another reason for the spread of bid'ah. Taqlid al-a'ma, blind following. My sheikh said, I saw my father doing it. Our family did it. It's done like this in our tribe. It's done like this in a particular region. So these people do it. Following desires. Another reason for the spread of bid'ah is the inability to distinguish between sunnah and bid'ah. Another reason for the spread of bid'ah is people speaking ignorantly. Another sign for bid'ah is when a person gives precedence to the intellect over the text. And for this point right here, we're going to look at some of the shubha, some of the doubts. There are many doubts which people come with which say, or they say it is allowed to follow, the, to follow and celebrate the Prophet Muhammad's birthday. There's a statement where the Prophet Muhammad he said, Man sanna fil Islam. Whoever innovates a sunnah in Islam, whoever comes and brings a sunnah. The answer to these people who use this to say it's permissible to come with the Prophet's birthday is that this means whoever carries out a sunnah and not necessarily invented, meaning it wasn't practiced before. So we have a sunnah that is mahjur, a sunnah that is abandoned. So we bring it back to life. This is what is meant by this hadith, men sanna fil Islam. The next shubha they come with is Umar al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He called the Tarawi bid'ah, ni'mat al bid'ah, bid'at al hasina, they say this is. Well, the answer to this shubha is that Salat al Tarawi isn't a bid'ah. It was actually prayed in Jama'ah during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, but he was afraid that it would have become an obligation, so he abandoned it. And Ibn Rajib al Hanbali, rahimahullah, he said, when the Salaf used the word bid'ah and something being good, then it refers to its linguistic meaning. Another shubha that these people come with is the speech of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he said, whatever the Muslim consider is good, is good. This doesn't mean, the answer to this doubt, my brothers and sisters, is that this doesn't imply bid'ah to be a good thing. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Kulla bid'atun dalala, wa kullu dalalatin no. He said every innovation. He didn't say ba'd bid'ah, aw qalilun minha, or some of it, khayrun wa hasana, la. He said, Kulla bid'atun dalala. 
Another shubhani come with is the statement of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, where he said, Bid'ah is of two types, praiseworthy and blameworthy. Whatsoever agrees with the sunnah is praiseworthy, and everything else is blameworthy. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, what is his intention here? What he meant is he meant linguistically. As I mentioned that Ibn Rajab said when the Salaf used the word bid'ah, they're talking about the linguistic meaning. He meant linguistically bid'ah. Another shubha they come with is it is okay. As the Sahaba compiled the Qur'an after the Prophet's death, they say, see, this is a bid'ah. The Qur'an wasn't in the way we have it today. So after the Prophet died, we, uh, you know, the Sahaba, they compiled the Qur'an. The answer to this doubt is the Qur'an was actually written during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another doubt that these people come with, supporters of this bid'ah, of the Mawlid, they say there's no clear text preventing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has explained everything in this deen and in this dunya. As he said, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have revealed to you the book explaining everything. Another doubt that the people who celebrate the Prophet's birthday is they say the things that Allah was quiet on, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't speak about, this is a mercy until there is a text which states otherwise. The answer to this shubhah refers this silence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it refers to the matters of the dunya and not the deen. Another shubhah these people come with, supporters of the Mawlid. They said celebrating the Prophet's birthday unites the Muslims. It brings us together. Allah hasn't made bid'ah, nor has his Prophet or his Sahaba a means to unite the Muslims. In fact, bid'ah is a cause for our division. Another shubhah that they come with, another doubt. They say celebrating the Prophet's birthday is dhikr Allah. And dhikr Allah is a legislated act. Yes, indeed, dhikr is a noble act of worship to draw closer to Allah. But it is based on what is found in the Qur'an, Sunnah, and the Ijma. I cannot come and say, say, La ilaha illallah one million times, brother, and Allah will give you a thousand angels. Where's my evidence from that? When you talk about things to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's from the unseen. And for this, you need wahy, you need revelation. And revelation is stopped. Another shubha that these people come with, another doubt, is they say, Mawlid is the time to extend salams on the Prophet, to give the salat wa salam ala khayru nabi al mursaleen. The answer to this doubt is that yes, it is legislated to give salams on the Prophet every time. There's no specific time, and when his name is mentioned, we should do it. But it is encouraged to do it on Friday as there's an authentic hadith. There's an authentic hadith that he said, frequently send salutations on me on Friday today. Didn't say do it on my birthday. Where's your look? Another shubha they come with is they say, he used to fast on Monday. And when he was asked why he sallallahu alayhi wasallam fasted, he said, this is the day I was born. So they say, well, this proves that his mawlid is a day of sharif, of sharaf. No, it's not. It doesn't prove that. In fact, the reason why he fasted on Monday is in an authentic hadith. He said, it is because the day I was born, it was the day when revelation was sent to me, and Monday was the day that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet. So where do you find fasting on Monday equivalent to the 12th of Rabi al awwal Where's your delil? Where's your delil? There is none. You follow an innovation. Another doubt that they come with, celebrating his birthday shows we love him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already, already gave you the challenge. He said, say, if you love me, 
then follow me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will love you. Follow the Prophet Muhammad's sunnah. If you really love the Prophet Muhammad, follow his sunnah. Another shubha these people come with, they say, it is a time to read the seerah. You choose one day out of the year to read the seerah. What about in the month of Ramadan when the acts of ibadah are more virtuous and more superior? You can't, do the, you can't read the seerah then? There's nothing legislated that say, the maulid is the best time to read the seerah. These are some of the doubts they come with. Another doubt that they come with, some of them say, the Christians celebrate Jesus' birthday, alayhi salam. So Muhammad is better than Jesus, so we should celebrate Muhammad's birthday. Actually, this is a proof against them and not for them. As the Prophet he said, Man Whoever follows the people, the way, the practices, and beliefs of the people, then he has resembled them. We have been ordered in so many texts, in so many authentic narrations, to do the opposite of what Ahlul Kitab do. We have been ordered to let our beards grow and trim our mustaches because they do the opposite. We have been commanded to pray in our shoes because they don't pray in their shoes. We have not been ordered to follow the ways and methodologies of the Jews and the Christians. And another show that they come with is they say the Wahhabis prohibited. Only the Wahhabis. Okay. Before Imam Abdul Wahab, Sheikh al Islam and Ulta who died 728 Hijrah prohibited. Tajuddin al Fakihani al Hanafi, who died 734 Hijrah, he prohibited the Mawlid. Ibn al Hajj, who died 737 Hijrah al Maliki, he prohibited. Imam al Shatabi al Shafi'i, who died 790 Hijrah, he prohibited the Mawlid of the Prophet Muhammad. Kul hatu burhan akum in kum tusadiqeen. Bring your proof and evidence for those who support the Mawlid of the Prophet Do you know better than the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhim? Those people who witnessed revelation come down on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Hal anta arba This bid'ah, my brothers and sisters, stay away from it. Bid'ah is a reason for us to continue to go further and further astray. And when we abandon the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, then we're only going to set ourselves up for destruction and humiliation and to be conquered by our enemies. And how frequent and many are the enemies of Islam right now. We ask Allah subhanahu